It's the Honey Williams Show. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Come on. Thank you, thank you so much. Can they just get married and have a baby and move on with their lives? Ah, uh, okay. Meghan Markle's father, Thomas, who's 73, who I feel very sorry for. I don't think that he has an evil bone in his body, despite his furled eyebrow. He uh, took us on the roller coaster ride, remember yesterday? First, he, was going to the ro or he wasn't going to go to the royal wedding because he felt as though those pictures that he staged for the paparazzi were getting in the way of Meghan and her big day. Now, he staged these pictures, but he didn't know what to do. I mean, look at him. I, 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 I still vote for him as dad. You know, he is in Mexico, he lives in Mexico. There he is at the library staging. <laughs> Another photo that he's looking up the royal wedding. And in the meantime, the pictures that we saw of him before all the staging were just him with a 12 pack leaving the store and a pack of smokes. He just wanted to be left alone and the paparazzi's already on him. He doesn't know what to do. What do you do when someone in your family becomes a princess? You think you know what to do until all of a sudden, you don't know what to do. <laughs> So then he said that he was going back to the wedding after Megan reached out to him. And now he's saying he's not going because he's having heart surgery. Aww. Now hold on now, hold on now. <laughs> They're giving him a stint. Do you know what a stint is? Yes. About four years ago, sorry daddy, I must talk about this. About four years ago, like while doing this show and trying to be happy and stuff, my father's laying on the slab getting a stint. But my father is like, uh, you know, in his late 80s as opposed to, you know, this guy right here who's 73. And I'm trying to do hot topics and be funny and the stint and how to go and right after the show's over, I'm on the phone like, mm, 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 mm. I don't believe he's getting a stint. I believe that he picked the lowest level of heart surgery to talk about. I believe that he will not be going to the wedding and they, they play too much with this man's health. Stop playing around, Dad. If you're not going, then just watch it on TV like the rest of them. Just watch. And, and, by the way, my father's stint is doing great. Thanks for asking for the TV. Thank you. Um, but here's the deal. So he's not gonna walk her down the aisle, so who should walk her down the aisle? I still say it shouldn't be her mother. I love her mother. I love everything about her mother. You know, a hardworking woman. She was the main parent in Megan's life all throughout her growing up at some particular point. I guess, you know, the father backed out or they divorced or whatever happened, but mom has stuck by her daughter. A mother walking her daughter down the aisle, her name is uh, Doria, by the way, and you know, she's a yogurt, a uh, uh, yogurt. <laughs> mm. Blueberry with lots of nuts on top, right? You stir it up good. <laughs> anyway, she's a yoga, a yogi, and she's also a social worker. 
But, you know, the royals have forced her to, you know, quit her thing. But what she's going to do is double back around once everything settles down from the wedding. And she's going to open up uh, some sort of yoga social worker place. Um, and so she's still going to work. But not because she has to, because she wants to. And because she can, because her daughter is now the princess. So this is mom, Doria. This is mom Doria carrying a Burberry bag. No word on whether she's wearing Burberry at the actual. Why do we zoom in so much and know every damn thing? <laughs> like, <right>. I, I... <laughs> this show is all up in the business. <laughs> anyway, so here's mom in London. She looks like she's keeping herself in peaceful surroundings. She's not bothered by anything. I don't think she should walk her down the aisle. Why? Because again, Megan is a 36 year old divorcee. She's been around. And if anything, Megan should walk herself down the aisle and not in a white dress. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you really want to stick to protocol. They tell me though that she's changing dresses twice. They're both going to be white. I don't know who her featured designers are or anything like that, but uh, Megan reportedly has convinced her ex husband, her ex husband, to hold off on doing a show. He's good looking, right? Look, he looks like Jason Hoppy before Jason turned evil, right? Yeah. Right? Anyway, so Megan was married once. If you read things, then twice. And had a boyfriend actively when she met the, the prince and then told the boyfriend over the phone, um, uh, <laughs> You keep flipping those pancakes. I've just met myself a prince. Bye. <laughs> and I don't blame her. Like, I'm rooting for Megan because Megan is absolutely winning and showing us that all things are possible. Um, but back to the guy. All right, so the ex husband. He was doing, he's some sort of a writer in Hollywood, and uh, that's the ex husband. And he was doing a show uh, about a woman who marries into the royals. He says it's not based on Meghan, but um, yes. wouldn't you capitalize on the situation? Yes. So apparently she's asked him, okay, please, I know you're gonna do this show anyway, and I'm not stopping you, but just please don't do it anytime surrounding, you know, the wedding. So he says, yeah. My thing is, why you, if I was Harry, why you get in touch with him, yo? <laughs> let, let him do the show, so what? You're my woman, I'm marrying you, you've punked me more than a few times in this whole situation, seeing as, you know, you're a black woman from Crenshaw, a divorcee, you know, you, you've had several years ahead of me in terms of growth and whatnot, Megan, oh and, oh, and I'm not giving you a prenuptial? You will not be calling anybody that I don't say who to call. And then for Megan, is that what you sign up for? Oh, hell, Megan's gonna be bored and I give it three. I don't know whether it's gonna be three weeks, three months, or three years, but it's going down. <clears throat> Don't play with the heart. So Damon Wayans has this show, which I happen to love. It's called uh, Lethal Weapon, and it's on Fox. And it's, uh, there's no laugh tracks or anything like that. You gotta find your moments to laugh. But it's good and it's fun, and he's sexy. And his co-star on the show apparently is um, being slammed by Damon. Let me explain why. This guy's name is Clay, uh, Clayne Crawford. Do you know him? And you never will. <laughs> Apparently he was a struggling actor all these years. He lands side of Damon Wayans and then he becomes actually the bigger star than Damon. I mean, people are looking at this guy in action with the lethal and the weapon. And they're like, oh, we like him. Well, somewhere along the way he got a big head. Uh-huh, and started bringing Big Head to the set. Oh. I want this and I want that and do this and do that and don't talk to me. 
So what did they do? They fired him for bad behavior <clears throat> and replaced him with somebody, sorry, Clayne, even hotter than you. Oh. Okay. Sean William Scott. Um, we need a full body of Scott on aisle two, please. Full body of Scott, aisle two. So Damon's got this new co-star, and the day after uh, Clayne, Cl Clay, I forgot his name already. Clayne, yeah. Clayne. <laughs> the day after Clayne was fired, Damon wasted no time blasting Clayne in a series of tweets. Now Damon and, and the whole crew kept very, very silent and professional behind the scenes while the spiralization of Klain was going down. Apparently, he was just not the one. But everyone was professional and nobody got on their devices and, you know, talked. So that's why we're all finding this out now. Oh. Well, uh, Damon. <laughs> he alleged Klain enjoyed making female staffers cry. Oh. Yes. <clears throat> Allegedly, Klain hit a 78-year-old co-star in the mouth with a bottle. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. After 40, nothing needs to be hit, jiggling. You, you need to slow down on your jog. Everything that breaks is gonna break for good. This man took it to the jaw. <laughs> Debrat style. Hi, Brat. Only a few people know that joke. <laughs> the brat was in the club, she, hit, she beat a woman, and then she went to jail for... The thing is that we've been on for 10 years, so I realize I've told you so many stories that you know, some of you are new to the show, and so you might not understand that one. It's okay. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> also, what was this man doing to be hit in the jaw with a bottle? And this is a civilized set because immediately I would have been on my device like, it's going down <laughs> on my show. But these people all kept their mouths shut. Now it's all coming out here on Hot Topics. And alleged the staff members hated Klain so much that they started hanging posters around the set. <gasps> well, now this is juvenile, you guys. <laughs> I, I mean, if you don't want the guy there, then just get him fired. Clayne Crawford is an emotional terrorist. Can you imagine rolling up to work every day, though, and seeing that? I mean, that's not fair either. I if know. you don't like somebody, then you just don't like them. You know, you fire them, you replace them with another. As long as Damon Wayans is there, who cares about the rest? You know, and also, this guy put a whole show in jeopardy just by acting like a jerk. You know, Damon and this guy are the stars. But behind every show, there are people supporting their families and their livelihoods. And if you mess it up for yourself, potentially you could be canceled and mess it up for everyone. Selfish joke. In the meantime, this guy should know better. He's married with a child. Oh. If I were his, two kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two children and a wife. So how do you act when your husband comes home after being fired from this show? Finding out all this jerkishness. What the hell? <laughs> you have one job. The car comes here and picks you up. You go out there, you read your lines. Why are you making for trouble? Do you see these kids? You're the one who wanted to live in this big house. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? I, I stopped whatever I was doing to support you. And now you go out here and do this. Damon also is blaming this guy for a stunt that left his own head bloody. And he posted it. Well, it's a good head. It's a good head to go though, right? But left it bloody. This shows how civilized Damon Wayans is because Damon could have talked about this a long time ago and also an example of everybody behind the scenes, how civilized you are. This is a good example when bad behavior won't be tolerated on the set as opposed to blasting it out one at a time. You wait for, you know, the guy to get fired and now everybody's happy and they rehired him with a virtual lookalike and the show will go on and still be successful. That's it. Very upsetting.
My friend Dave Mizajewski is here. That's why I'm dressed like a safari woman. Yeah. No. Back in the day, I could not stand the wild animals. I was very scared and skittish, but now I'm all in. Like I wanna touch and feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. They told me that there's a bullfrog here. Now we've had frogs here before, but the bullfrog is the one with the big And I think if folklore serves me correctly, if you lick them, you'd be good for the day. Plus, there's a porcupine and some other nonsense. Anyway, so Dave is here, and we're going on a safari later on in the show. In the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Tom Ford, the designer, is furious at Amal Clooney. Well, Tom's team spent weeks making a custom gown for the Met Gala for a mall. Weeks! Oh, the pageantry and the fittings and all that. But at the last minute, a mall decided to wear this outfit instead. Which, by the way, I love. It's a little known designer. I, no, little known, you said who's that? Little known designer by the name of, he's from Britain, his name is Richard Quinn. And so I guess Tom was like, what? You're not wearing mine, you're wearing a Richard Quinn. It might not have been as insulting to Tom, maybe if she even wore a bigger designer, but the idea that she wears an upstart, which by the way, this is a fabulous red carpet outfit. <laughs> Slacks and a train, she was with her husband there. Tom reportedly told the mall's team he'd rather she didn't wear it at all if she wasn't gonna wear it on the red carpet. Well, Amal did end up wearing the outfit, just not on the big red carpet moment. She, there, there's the Tom Ford dress. Suzanne, I like the first outfit Me better, too. right? She made the right choice. Yeah. She did. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, red carpet. And, yes. Yeah. Now this is cute for an after party, you know, cause it's all slimming to her and she, there's no train and she's with her husband, you know, George. However, uh, once, she was got inside, once she got inside the gala is what I'm telling you. She d does the red carpet, then she goes inside the gala and she quickly changes to the Tom Ford. In the Met gift store. <laughs> Behind the tuberose, the jujubes, the mints and the magazines. She's up there changing into her Tom Ford. I believe she has a right to change her mind at the last minute. You know, Tom Ford, you know, you have the right to be upset as well, but unfortunately what you all do is you give these celebrities so much um, carte blanche that, uh, you know, this is not just any old Amal, this is Amal Clooney and she's arrived. And I do believe that you will still work with her again. People in my Hot Topics morning meeting were saying he'll never do anything for her again. I said, oh yes, he will. As long as she's married to him, she's got cachet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tom Ford is really handsome, isn't he? He's married, yeah. I think he and his husband have been together for many, many years and then they finally got married, but what a good looking man, right? <laughs> Although, I still can't justify spending $25 for a lipstick. <laughs> That's all. All right, so <laughs> there's this pro golfer's wife who was arrested for allegedly attacking him and his mother, bruh, after he played a bad round of golf. <laughs> Professional, Tiger Woods was in the match and some others were in the match and he was supposed to go out, his name is Lucas Glover. Yeah, I know, I thought that, that was um, Meg Ryan's ex-husband, Dennis Quaid too. I thought Dennis Quaid and uh, Camille Grammer, right? Right, squint, squint, squint. <laughs> anyway, his name is Lucas Glover and Lucas, um, did not play very well, and apparently she got very upset. <laughs> Lucas is the one who told police that whenever he doesn't play well, his wife Krista gets violent <laughs> and calls him the P-U word. 
in front of their kids. Well, look, you've got one job. Get out there and swing that. <laughs> yeah. Ice your knee, tell me what you need in the refrigerator. You know, I gave up a life of my own and I'm here to support you. See, this is the other side of being the wife of an elite athlete. The other side is there's gotta be wives who aren't all like, oh baby, you know, you'll do it better next, the next time. No, it's like, really? <laughs> we got 12 bedrooms to take care of? I'm a society girl, all the girls are out, these bitches are now laughing at me because you lost? <laughs> Are you serious with this? You asked me to keep my weight in, in one pocket and I've been keeping my weight and my beauty up and all you have to do is go out there and swing that damn club? <laughs> or take it to the hoop or throw a ball or kick a ball or whatever. I'm playing, but you can imagine somewhere in here there's a reality show. Angry housewives of elite athletes. Where the housewives really, it's not all about fighting each other, it's about fighting these men. Not, I don't mean physically. As mugshots go, it's a very beautiful one. Uh, Krista was charged with domestic violence, resisting arrest, and she was bonded out for 2,500 bucks. Now look, uh, now I told you, she also did the violence on the mother-in-law too. So it's the husband, it's the two kids standing there and the mother-in-law. And Krista is going bonkers. Well, she's due back in court on May 31st. I would love to see what happens. You got one job, one job. <laughs> All right, I know what I hear and you're not gonna make me crazy with this. I hear Yanny. What do you hear? Oh. Laurel? Yeah. Clap if you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> so there's this audio clip uh, having the internet divided. Not in my house. We all heard Yanny. Norman, you heard Laurel. I heard Laurel. But you heard Yanny at first. I heard Yanny yesterday, and then I woke up and all of a sudden I hear Laurel. You have one job. <laughs> one job. <laughs> <laughs> um, some people are saying they hear Yanny, I heard Yanny. Others say that they hear Laurel. Okay, I want you to listen very closely. No clapping and no giggling. Just listen. Laurel, Laurel. Laurel, 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 Laurel. Okay, clap if you hear Laurel. <laughs> what? Get out! <laughs> Suzanne, what'd you hear? Danny! Thank you. Danny! No way, Danny. I swear. Danny! <laughs> Danny? I heard. Danny! I have no idea why this is even a, a topic of a discussion, but they're throwing chairs and it's okay, talk to someone. <laughs> Did you hear Yanny? Just yes. clap if you hear Yanny. <laughs> but more people here heard Laurel. <laughs> I've got one job and that's to keep the train moving. And I will. We got more great show for you everybody. Dave Mizajewski is here with his wild animals, but up next, the Hot Five. So grab a snack and come on back.